I've been working on my robot survival game for a few months now, but my current robot model isn't the best, and you guys have not been shy about telling me. So today is the day. I'm finally sitting down and creating a better robot. But before I started that, I wanted to finish what I had started in my last video. I'd gotten some basic farming mechanics done, but so far all you can do is place dirt and put a carrot in it. That's cool and all, but it doesn't do anything yet. So I started working on making the plants actually grow. Now you might be thinking, I just have a timer telling you when to switch states, and you'd be right. But I also made it so that each plant has multiple parameters you can fill in. So now if you wanted to add a different plant, I just have to input the number of states it has and the time between, and it does the rest for me. I did this not only to make it easier to add new plants, but also because I didn't want every plant to have the same number of states. A carrot growing over three states looks much better than if a tree just pops out of nowhere. I also made it so it stores a range for how many crops you harvest, so you don't get the same set amount every time. Now once I set up the parameters for a carrot, you can see it actually grows. Obviously this is faster than it will be in the game, I just didn't want to have you guys wait here forever. So now that the plant actually grows, I went back and made it so planting actually took something out of your inventory. Since I spent so long on the inventory, this was really easy, I just had to make it subtract one from the current spot. Easy. Next. Now I decided to take my own advice from my first video, a sprinkler is still a sprinkler. Plants need water. And added a way to water plants. I started by modeling a bucket, which I think turned out pretty good. Well, until you pick it up. Moving on to the actual plant part, I mean it's so plants don't need to be watered to grow, but they will grow substantially faster if you water them. This allows you to invest the time to get them faster, or just go out exploring and wait a bit longer. I also made it so that the water plants change to a darker material so you can tell what is watered. Now having an endless supply of water isn't realistic or fun, so I added a way to track the amount of water you have and display it within the inventory. Now if you try to water a plant with an empty bucket, it won't do anything. Luckily you can just walk over to the water and refill it whenever you need. Okay, okay, I guess this time I finally improved my robot model. As you all know, my modeling skills are lacking to say the least. Luckily for me, I took a week off work to go on a beach vacation with my family. And I don't know if you guys know this, but the beach is outside, and game devs do not belong there. So instead of sitting on the beach for 24 hours, I watched One Piece. I, I mean, I practiced my blender skills. I did the classic donut tutorial by the blender guru, and was ready to take on the world. I put my art skills to the test, and tried to sketch up a few designs I like. And after that didn't work, I went back to the original sketch I used for my first model. I actually got my girlfriend's sister to draw me a bunch of robots, and I think she did a really good job. I really like a few of these, so I'll probably add more later on. But between the original image and the poor sketches I drew, I could craft a passable robot. And after hours in Blender, here's my first attempt. I threw it in my Discord to get some feedback before I committed to it, and it's a good thing I did because new eyes are always good. You guys pointed out the head was way too big, and looking at it now, I totally agree. So I went in and redid the head a bit to fit the body, and I think it looks significantly better now. Thank you to everyone in the Discord, and if you want to be a part of that community, there's a link in the description. Now all I have to do is rig it, color it, and import it to Unity. So long, old model. You might be missed. But now there's a much better model in town. Ah crap, his ears fell off. Okay, now there's a new model in town. I then had to get the items lining up with his hands again, and this went... well. Once I got all that working smoothly, I wanted to get back to improving the farming. I wanted the player to be able to see where they are creating dirt piles, so I used what many games use, a green ghost object. Hey, if it ain't broke. I think this is such a simple addition, but it feels so much better seeing where you can place things. Now all that's left was making it possible to actually pick up a crop once it's fully grown. Again, since this was just playing with the inventory I spent so much time on, it wasn't too bad. I just added the correct number to the inventory and reset the dirt pile to the empty state. Now you can farm to your heart's content. The only problem now is since the number of carrots you get is different every time, there currently isn't a way to tell how many you picked up without knowing how many you had beforehand. Because of this, I added a feature that is super useful for all parts of the game. A simple pop-up that tells you what you collected. My first attempt was a little sloppy. I used the same container component that I used to set up the inventory, but instead of preset spaces, I created a new one for every item that is picked up. And since it's a container, it'll auto-space them out. This did work, but every item would add a new pop-up, which looks kinda bad. So after some tweaking, I got it to check what the last item you picked up was and if it's the same, it'll just add to the current pop-up. This looks much cleaner already. I then added a mask so that the items don't just fill up the whole screen, and I also made it so that the pop-up's destroyed after 5 seconds. The only problem with this is if you pick up multiple things too fast, it takes a while for the items on top to disappear, so you don't see what you picked up right away. I'm sure there's something simple I can do to improve this, but I had to start this video so I didn't get to it yet. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions. After all that work, our robot can finally be an effective farmer. But wait, robots don't eat. Why does he need to farm? Well, my curious friend, that's because you're not actually playing as a robot. You're playing as a boy who's controlling the robot. Obviously, that's not confusing at all. So you'll have to continuously bring food to your base to feed your kid, who's actually you. Okay, so now we just have to find the boy. Right, I still have to make that part of the game. But that's what next time's for, and I am so excited for what comes next. Right now my game is exactly like every other survival game, as many of you have kindly pointed out. So now that I've gotten a few base mechanics in, I think I'm ready to show you how unique this game can actually be. I hope you're as excited as I am, and if you don't want to miss it, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.